Welcome to the Perfect Life Awakening Show, hosted by Royce Morales. Royce has been a transformational facilitator, teaching groundbreaking, spiritually-based courses for more than four decades. She is the author of three books about her teachings. Join Royce as she takes you on a journey into how to live your best life and find your true purpose through discovering the origins of subconscious, disempowering notions, and releasing them. She talks with experts and inspiring people just like you who learned to trust their intuitive inner wisdom, which led to life-changing shifts. Today, her guests live an empowered existence and are helping change the world to a higher consciousness place based on truth and love. You deserve to awaken to, align with, and embody your true self and live a life filled with love. Transform yourself from triggered to empowered and create your perfect life. Here is your host, Royce Morales. Hello, welcome to my show. I'm Royce and I am the founder of Perfect Life Awakening, which helps you transform from triggered to empowered, which is what we could all use nowadays. Um, I'm thrilled. I'm really thrilled to know that you are watching and listening to this show, and we have a little, uh, a little barky guest. <laughs> no, I don't know what that is. Yeah, I've got my little assistant over here, Gigi. She often barks in the middle of things. But anyway, today we're going to talk to Wendy Knox. I've had Wendy on my show a couple of different times. And I just love talking with her. She's so creative, and she calls herself a professional uplifter. I just love that. And she is the author of a book called From Muck to Magic. And she's learned a lot from going from her own muck to her own magic, for sure. Back in the past, or in her past life, as she says, she used to be the only female SVP, creative director at one of the largest advertising agencies in LA. And then she lost her job at 50 and she had to reinvent herself, which was an interesting challenge. Um, and out of that reinvention, she started to help others change just by changing their stories. She had a miraculous encounter with dragonflies that she has shared many times, but I'm sure she'll share it again because it's so amazing. Um, then she rose up for, from her own muck <laughs> and grew her wings later in life. And now she really helps people that, I don't like to use the word old, people that have more years behind them <laughs> to change their story about aging and what that's really about. And now she, she does a um, inspirational talks and workshops called Breaking Out of the Age Cage, which she actually did on, on my show a few months ago. So she's, she's really on a mission to reframe our notion about um, aging. And I love this, written by a, a terrific ad writer. She says, a pro it, she sees aging as a process of becoming more of who we are, not less of who we were. And just let those words reverberate in you because they're so important. So out of her personal experiences, she's learned a whole lot about the power of prayer. And if you're not into using the word prayer, just change the word to affirmation or visualization or just asking. So that's what I'll be doing today. I'll be using the word asking for what we want. And she's going to share how things really shifted for her just by asking. And there's a few little, little twists and turns to asking that I'm, I'm sure she'll get into. And, you know, I because I teach about that, too. So I'll talk about my attitude about asking. So she asked for help from the universe when she was about to give up. And she discovered that asking is really our superpower. It really is. So um, I know that just to add my own two cents right in the beginning before I let Wendy talk, but I have found that most of us, and maybe I could even say all of us to some degree, have been taught from day one that it's not okay to ask. You know, we're, yeah, we're, we're told we're selfish or we're bratty or we're, you know, what right do you have to ask? Or, you know, look at all I've sacrificed for you. I mean, there's so many, <laughs> so many messages that we've gotten about asking. And so we're, we kind of get in our own way. Um, so 
So we have mixed ideas about asking. And of course, you know, prayer is something that I'm, I'm sure people have some issues with. You know, I know in my own life, I was never taught to pray. And when I did start to understand how things work in the universe, I did start to pray and ask and things it's really interesting the things that resulted from that. And I can tell a few stories myself, but we're really not taught. We're not given any techniques or information about that. So I've talked enough. Welcome, okay. Wendy. <laughs> Thanks and, for having me, Royce. Oh my gosh. And I'm it's... sorry. That was Blossom, our dog, who uh, I asked her not to do that, but evidently <laughs> the superpower didn't work with her. <laughs> well, you know, Dogs sometimes have minds of their own, that's for sure. I know mine does. She's a terrier, and, and every time she starts barking, everybody says, oh, that's because she's a terrier. So I'm, I'm not going to buy into that. She can learn. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so welcome, Wendy. And first of all, just do you want to start by telling the dragonfly story, or do you want to just jump right in in other ways? Oh, I yeah. think, well, I think it's a big part of the asking. So I'll try to do an abbreviated version. But like Royce said, um, I had this big, fat, executive woman job in advertising, kind of like Don Draper and ad, uh, ad man, mad, mad men, <laughs> but without the cigarettes or the martinis. And um, it's a very youth obsessed uh, career advertising. And um, I lost my job at 50. Coincidence? I don't think so. But anyway, I was devastated and found myself sobbing in my backyard because I didn't know what I was going to do. And my husband's an entrepreneur, which I've probably told you this before, Royce, but entrepreneur means uh, no health plan in French. So we really needed my salary and it was scary. And I was sobbing in my backyard and I said a prayer. I asked the universe, am I too old to reinvent myself? Please give me a sign. And I went for a walk and I came home and there were hundreds of red dragonflies in my backyard. And I had never seen a red dragonfly. I had never seen them in my backyard. I have no water there. And they stayed for four hours the first day and came back for three more days. And it was just one of the most magical things I've ever seen. They were just whirling and twirling over my umbrella. And of course, I had to Google and learn more about dragonflies. Like, why were they there? And, um, I discovered that dragonflies, like many of us, spend most of our lives, or much of our lives, crawling in the muck at the bottom of a pond. They stay down there for four years as just creepy, crawly brown insects. And then one day, something propels them to climb out of the pond, and in the light, their wings unfurl, and they don't even fly till later in life. And I thought, oh my God, I asked for a sign and I believe the dragonflies are telling me you're one of us, you're a dragonfly and you're getting your wings later in life. And everywhere I went on the, every freeway in LA, and there's a lot of them, there were dragonflies. And I, I saw them, I mean, it was crazy. And finally, my husband and I were on vacation in Ojai, California, where we live now, walking to lunch across the lawn. And there was another swarm of red dragonflies. And I said, okay, well, that's it. I think these dragonflies know that I'm a copywriter and a branding person. And I think they want me to get their story out into the world that it's never too late to soar. And in the muck, we grow our magic. And so that's the message I feel compelled to bring into the world. So thank you for helping me. I love that story. That is, in all the times I've been hearing amazing, miraculous stories, that's probably the biggest one. <laughs> it really, you can't make it up, you know? Yeah. And, um, right. And it did, that story, I think, really made the light bulb go off on yeah. the power of asking. Yeah. Like yeah. when I asked, 
I had no idea how or when I was going to get an answer, you know, yeah. and that I think is the really big thing. And so when people pray or ask, if there's a delay or something doesn't go the way they think, they yeah. think their prayers are being answered. But, you know, when we're dealing with the realm of the divine, sometimes there's even a better plan than what our meager little ego minds were yeah. thinking of. And sometimes things have to unfold. You know, I always call that divine timing. You know, if, I had, met, if I had met my my current husband a minute sooner, it wouldn't have worked, you know? So it, it all has to come into play. The little puzzle pieces have to fit together and certain co-stars have to be there and, you know, the moon has to be, you know, whatever. But yeah, right. time is really important. Yeah. So I just, <laughs> I don't know if I've shared this story. To me, I mean, it's not as dramatic. Well, maybe it is. To me, it was just as dramatic as the dragonflies, but I have to share um, two stories, actually. One happened the other day and one happened several years ago. Several years ago, I was really into going whale watching. I wanted to see whales. I was so enamored by whales and how amazing they are. So we went whale watching. No whales. <laughs> we went <laughs> whale watching again. No whales. And the captain of the ship said, this never happens, you know. He kept saying that. He said, this is so bizarre. This is whale season. We always see whales. Nothing. <clears throat> and I'm laughing and going, it must be me. <laughs> <laughs> we, went, we went to Maui, the whale capital of the world. No whales that day. So I was just like, okay, what's going on here? So we were, we were going somewhere. We were coming back on Pacific Coast Highway. And there's an area, there's a stretch of the highway that is you can really see the ocean pretty close to the, the highway. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I said to my husband, I really want to see whales before I die. <laughs> Very dramatic. <laughs> and I swear, I looked to the right and there were whales. Uh, and I'm like, are you kidding me? Uh, there they were, you know, jumping and leaping right there. Oh my God. Right in your own backyard. Right in my own backyard, literally. And it, it just blew me away. It blew both of us away. So that's my first story. My second story happened the other day. I spent a lot of time thinking about what I'm going to ask and, you know, how I'm going to make this show interesting for people. And I was feeling really stuck. And I was down, we live in the mountains. So I was down the mountain. I had some shopping I had to do. And I'm thinking and thinking and thinking and going, okay, what am I going to ask Wendy? What am I going to ask Wendy? And <laughs> I swear, I looked to the right. On the freeway, there was this glowing neon billboard that said, prayer works. Uh, <laughs> and, and, is... then, and then, to make it even more interesting, I was, I was like, oh my God, goosebumps. I was driving further on my way home, and there in front of me was a mobile home, and the name on the mobile home was Intention. And I went, okay, come on. Oh, I, I love that. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? So perfect. I know, I know. So that's enough of my stories. Tell us, tell us what drew you here today. What, what what is it that's going on, and what happened, and how did it work? Tell us the whole story of how I came to this subject. You mean? Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, I've just been aware. I've actually been keeping a list of these. <laughs> answered prayers of the you know i was thinking it went the thing that you were saying in the beginning about being taught to not ask you know it's like you're spoiled or you expect too much or whatever and i remember when i had my big job and i had a baby i was the only woman at my level with this huge job and a baby and it was just like too much and I talked to my boss about trading a raise for Fridays off and you know I was still available by phone and computer but I had some freedom and I thought I was this trailblazer in this very you know male dominated company and it would be good for all the women that I did this. And people were so 
jealous and angry and like how dare she and it really showed me something about our culture and asking but that did not deter me because once the more i learned about our connection to the divine and that we are that we are the divine within us i really started feeling um the importance of asking so i've had so many magical experiences one day i was sitting in our garden which is where i do my most most of my asking you know i just feel like surrounded by nature that's where the magic is so one day i was sitting in my garden and my parents loved gardens and my dad was just such a creative gardener and you know, both and I was just sitting there really, really missing them. And I said out loud, I said, Mom, if you're around me, I really miss you. If you're around me, give me and I'm sitting on this little Adirondack. And right after I said it, a little white feather dropped down right in front of me. And Edna, which is what I call the critical voice in my head, the bitchy, non-believing voice, she goes, oh, that's a coincidence. <laughs> so I thought, oh, yeah. So I said, Daddy, if you're around me, please give me a sign. And a few feet away in the flower bed, another white feather dropped down. And... I came into the house with my little feathers and I told my husband, I said, you're just not going to believe this. I just feel like spirit is all around us and we ask and we receive. And he was outside with the dog and we have this little mini orchard on the property. And he came back in and he goes, you've got to see this. And he took me down and near this mandarin orange tree was this pile of white feathers oh my God. and it was like i don't know i felt like i was being told there's no limit to our connection and it was just so amazing another time i was going through a really really hard time with someone in my life that i was really worried about and i was meditating and in my meditation, I saw this person and myself, and there were, uh, it was like that image, you know, the sacred heart, the heart with flames. Mm -hmm. And I was shown that we should both sit in front of each other and burn up the past in these flames. So I saw the heart and the, the flames. And then I was still feeling so sad and, you know, nice Jewish girl. I have a connection with Mother Mary and I just always feel her presence. She was a nice Jewish girl too, I guess. But um, so I said, Mother Mary, I'm feeling so deeply sad and worried about blah, blah, blah. Can you give me a sign that you're with me? And I came inside. Oh, I. I went to this picnic table that we had to do some work and I sat down at my computer and I, for some reason, I looked down on the ground and there was a little tiny silver milagro. Do you know what those are? Yeah. Those little symbols. <laughs> and it was a sacred heart. Oh my God. <laughs> and I love those milagros. I love Mexican art and I use those in my paintings sometimes. So I had them in the house, in my art drawer. I never had had one out there. I don't know how it got there, but it was magic. Wow. And it just gave me so much uh, faith and um, support. Wow. You know, because I think we all need to believe that there's more to this world than what we're seeing. And those are two examples of, um, I believe there's so much magic all around us and within us. We just need to remember to ask. Yes, yes. 
So is there a particular, because it sounds like the, the examples you gave were about kind of asking for signs or asking for support. Is there, what, else, what other ways do you use asking for? Well, I, uh, okay, so here's, uh, this is a different story. This story reminds me a little bit of your whales. So um, one day, I have a very messy desk. <laughs> like it's <laughs> it's the the bane of my existence. And one Sunday, I said, "Okay, I got to clean this mountain of mess. And if if I clean it, I'm going to reward myself with this amazing sangria that they serve at this little restaurant called the Farmer and the Cook." So. That was like sort of my carrot to getting through the mess of my desk. Oh, I'm gonna have this sangria. And I kept thinking about this. They have the most amazing sangria. It's almost the color of your top and it has all this fresh fruit and it's tangy and it's sweet. And I just was obsessing about it. And it got me through this big mess on my desk. And my husband and I went over on Sunday nights, they have, uh, wood fire pizza and music and sangria. So I just had this mouth watering feeling for the sangria. I could taste it practically. So we got in line for our food. We get all the way to the front of the line and they're out of sangria. It was <laughs> like, I couldn't believe it. And I know this is a first world problem. It's so stupid to be upset about sangria, but I just was, so obsessed with it. So I thought, okay, I'll let go of the sangria. Pellegrino water is healthier for me anyway. So we go and we sit down to have lunch, dinner, and we're eating. And I look up and there's this woman that we know, kind of a new friend, Mary, and she's walking over to my table. And it's like this apparition. I mean, I, it was almost like there was heaven light and angels singing. She's walking over to our table with half a bottle, half a carafe of sangria. Oh my and she God. said, we had to leave and this is too good to leave behind. Do you want it? Oh my God. Wow. And I just thought, so I think a big part of asking is is embodying it like you know um feeling the vibration of what you want as if you have it you know because that's what i was doing all day i was sending out the signals the vibration of this but then i had to let go of it coming in the way that i thought it would and then the universe surprised me and it's just so fascinating. And I, th I think that's a big part. I always think of it like you go into a restaurant, you place your order, but most of us don't go into the kitchen and tell the chef what seasoning to use, how long <laughs> to cook it, you know, and I, that's kind of how I see God or spirit or whoever we believe in the universe is we kind of place the order through our intention, our desire, and then who knows what form it's going to get whipped up into, you know? Yeah, yeah. So that, I think, is a big piece of it. Yeah, that's, that's a great analogy because I always talk about that, too, that you have to let go of your expectations about how it has to look because it might look like, you know, somebody walking over to your table with sangria, you know? <laughs> Or it might look like, wow, I wasn't supposed to have sangria because I forgot that I shouldn't be drinking right now. You know, there, there's all kinds right. of ways that it shows up. Letting go of expectations is a real big key. Yeah. So what else, what other, quote, rules of asking do you have? Um, rules of asking. Hmm. Well... This isn't really a rule, but this was a really important thing that I learned. Um, for the last uh, several months, I've been going through really major muck. Uh, somebody very near and dear to me 
has been struggling with a mental health crisis and it I can't really go into the details but it's been devastating and I don't know that I've ever felt so afraid so helpless and I'm usually a very hope-filled person but the doctor was not offering us a lot of hope and so I was really devastated and I have this practice of every day, no matter what, going out and sitting in the garden and I, um, that's where I start off with like a, I have a journal and I always write things that I'm grateful for. So no matter how bad things are, some days it's just like, oh, look at that little red hummingbird or hello. The air is not as hot as it was, or, you know, it can be something like that, or it can be something like, thank you for uh, connecting me with Royce and, you know, like anything. So I was out there doing that. And then I was praying for this person for their recovery. And I did that every day. And, but my prayers were coming from such a weepy anguish filled place and nothing was happening and I was getting frustrated and um and then it occurred to me wow you're asking in this desperate pathetic way very low vibration very it was a prayer it was an ask but it's hard, I believe, to receive what we're asking for if we're in this, this place. Because yeah. we're wanting divine intervention, divine miracles, but we're asking from just like the bottom of the barrel, which I think it's important to have grief and to have, go through those feelings. But it occurred to me that maybe I need to ask in a different way. And the light bulb went off and I thought, I am going to, instead of just asking, I am going to thank the universe. I'm going to thank God. Thank you, God, for the miracle of so-and-so recovering and being of sound mind, healthy body, blah, blah, blah. All the things I was hoping for. And I was thinking as if it had already happened. Mm -hmm. And it was the most miraculous display of the shift. That day, that day, everything changed. And this loved one had an understanding of what was going on. They kind of came back from this dimension they were in and back to their right mind and everything changed. The other thing I did that day, and I thought maybe it was a dual thing, is a very dear friend of ours um, had passed away and I started talking to her too. I figured I need all the help I can get. So I did what I just described and I also said, Joan, you're an angel now. I know you love us and I know you know what we've been going through. If there's anything you can do up there, we could use some help. And maybe it was the combination. Maybe it was just my shifting of, you know, the sludge that I was in. But that thanking, I believe, was the magic wand. And so now there's, you know, certain things in my life that I'm longing for that seem really hard to make happen. But I'm reminding myself of um asking and then thanking god or whoever you believe in as if it's already happened and, and that has been really powerful yeah i think that's a great example of just not coming from fear with what we're asking for because you know i always get this image that if i'm coming from oh my god i've got to have this you know somebody's going Hey, Royce, <laughs> look at your needs, look at your fears. What's really going on here? Why do you really want this? You know, all those things that, you know, they're just mirroring that to me. So that's a really important point. 
So uh, just to remind everybody, I'm talking to Wendy Knox, and we're going to take a little bit of a break, and we'll be right back, and we will continue to talk about asking for what we want. Home Times TV. Do you crave joy but feel stuck? Do you go through life feeling constantly triggered and frustrated? Fear is likely the culprit, and subconscious fear is likely sabotaging you. Perfect Life Awakening is a time tested, spiritually based approach to inner transformation created by Royce Morales. For over 40 years, she has helped people get to the origins of subconscious fears and ultimately help them find their true purpose and a life full of joy. Sign up for Perfect Life Awakening today at RoyceMorales.com. You deserve to go from triggered to empowered, shifting your life with Perfect Life Awakening. Imagine becoming a super influencer. Reinvent yourself, invest in your brand, and then manifest your success with a robust, spheric approach. Ohm Times Media and Broadcasting offers a unique and multifaceted way to become the spiritual and conscious influencer you deserve to be by putting your message across our powerful platform with its proven record of integrity and excellence. Through our produced shows, Ohm Times offers the opportunity to become a social media TV personality, a radio show host, an Ohm Times Magazine columnist, and a syndicated podcaster, all in one shot. By live streaming your show on Ohm Times TV and broadcasting it across the extensive Ohm Times radio and TV networks, you become more than a host. You become an ambassador and a force for positive change. Ohm Times, open yourself to the possibilities. I want to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. I need to eat, eat, eat apples and bananas. Why can't I eat, eat, eat apples and bananas? Support the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks to help provide meals to those in need. Join us at feedingamerica.org. Welcome back. <laughs> those pearls. <Call> the act. <laughs> I'm talking with Wendy Knox, professional uplifter, and we're talking about asking for what we want and, you know, what it really means to ask and all kinds of interesting things. So the stories were just great, Wendy. Um, so what, why does asking not always work? We've mentioned a few things. Um, I was mentioning coming, both of us were mentioning coming from fear sometimes gets, gets in the way, but what about other reasons that things don't seem to manifest how we want them to be timing, all of that. Is there anything else you've noticed about that? Well, <laughs> this is a funny one, but so you know that I wrote this book called From Muck to Magic, and so many people that see it say, God, Oprah would love this book. You've got to get this book to Oprah, you know, me and 10 million other people. So I have an altar, and on my altar, I have a picture of Oprah under the oak trees in Santa Barbara, or it could be the palm trees in Maui, I don't care. And she's holding my book. I'm gonna show it to you, wait a second. This is really funny. So can you, oh, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, I can see it, okay. yeah. So I have that and I do this really funny thing that whenever I go to Santa Barbara, I have a book with a ribbon with a note to Oprah, that maybe I'll just run into her. So that's something I've been asking the universe for, and it hasn't been happening. So I go, why is, not, is that not happening? So maybe it's because 
Maybe that's my ego that needs validation from this superstar, incredible, magical, inspirational influencer. Maybe that's what my ego wants to feel like an A++ in life. <clears throat> and maybe the way I touch women on the one-to-one -one basis or in smaller groups, which is what I love. I love talking to someone like you. I love doing my intimate workshops, you know. So maybe the universe, sorry, there's Blossom. Maybe the universe is telling me that doesn't really matter. You know, like, why are you looking out there instead of in here? I mean, that's an example of an ask that has not happened. Yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Oh, I totally relate. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So um, another one is I've written this TED Talk. It's called Breaking Out of the Age Cage, and it's about changing the stories we tell ourselves about age. And, you know, my background's a branding expert, so it's rebranding age. And like you talked about in the beginning, now I have not yet found the right stage to give this because most of the TED events, TEDx events, are being curated by 20-year-old tech techie guys who are not going to relate to this message. So then I go, okay, I have this message. The way I thought I was going to be delivering it has not happened yet. But then Kathy Bressler, who we both know, who has alter community she invited me to give it to her community so i gave my talk on zoom to women who really really related it to related to it and then kathy asked me to do a workshop online and so i'm getting my message out it just isn't in the specific way i thought so to me that's when I have to trust, like you said, divine timing, what my higher self, my soul, my heart wants for me, you know? And, um, and I, in my case, I feel like when I try to make things happen career-wise, they don't really happen according to my plan, but if yeah. I let, go of my plan and follow what I call the golden breadcrumbs, then this magic happens. So um, when things, when the asks don't happen in the way I expect them to, that to me is a sign that I need to trust more and trust that things are unfolding for my highest and best good, but not in the way I had it pre-scripted in my mind. Yeah. Yeah. So what about, I mean, I talk a lot about deservingness in my courses and how there's a part of us that subconsciously really believes to our core that we don't deserve. Do you, do you notice that in some way? Because I find that, you know, it happens over and over again, that people are asking for things and trying and doing all the right things and nothing manifests. I mean, it could be all of the above, but there's a part of them that says, oh, I don't really deserve this. So we're pushing it away subconsciously. Do you, do you notice that too? Well, I don't know if I have the, I don't deserve, but I do have this really toxic comparing thing. Mm. Like, oh, that person has a bigger platform than I do. And of course, they're being interviewed on blah, 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 because they're more blank, younger, smarter, more tech savvy, bigger platform, blah, blah, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I think that is sort of this punishing voice inside of me that I, I have to uh, work with to overcome. And, you know, I also find that there are certain areas of my life where things manifest uh, more easily than others, you know, um, I do have, do we have time for another quick story? Yeah. 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 
So one of the areas that I struggled in, and this I'm sure has to do with deserving, is I always, you know, I'd been married when I was 22 and divorced at 23, and then I spent like eight years in dating hell. And, um, and I was always longing for my soulmate. I didn't want just a partner. I really wanted my soulmate. And I grown up around a lot of marriages of people that frankly, I didn't think they belonged together. And I was like everyone's marriage counselor in my family. So, but I wanted my soulmate and I became very, cause I was in a relationship with someone who was the most wonderful guy. And this friend of mine, I said, you know, he's such a great guy, he's this and this and this, but there's a certain magic that's missing. Like he'll tell a joke and everyone else thinks it's funny. And I'm like, yawn, you know, <laughs> it's like just something wasn't vibing. And I always wanted to be with somebody that we could be at the Taj Mahal or at McDonald's. And I just love being with them, you know, and that's what mattered. So my friend said, well, maybe the 97% of what he is, isn't as important as the 3% of magic, you know, and that's true for me. So I started, I wrote a list of, you know, the man that I am with is in present tense. And I imagined him as if he was already my life. And I wrote all this stuff and, you know, we, we communicate full sentences without words. We connect, blah, 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 blah. And then I started praying and I asked for my soulmate and that it be effortless, fast and fun. I didn't want to spend five years with someone figuring out, is this the right person or not? I asked for my soulmate and that it be effortless, fast and fun. And then I started envisioning that there was somebody out there longing for me like I was longing for him. And I just, every night before I went to sleep, I did this thing where I imagined bringing home a pink bag, and I think it represented love, and putting it on my pillow. And then I would ask to meet this soulmate in my prayer, in my dreams. And I had this dream where I walked into a theater and it was completely empty, but there was a guy in the front row with dark hair. We walked up to him and I said, oh, you're the one. He goes, yeah, you're the one. And we walked <laughs> off together. And yeah. the craziest thing is I ended up, um, oh, it's such a long story. I can't really, I shouldn't go into all of it, but long, long story short, I had that dream. I asked the, for another dream to meet him again in my dreams. And this time we were in a temple and another language was being spoken. I didn't know what the language was and his mother was there. And little did I know when I met my husband, I had met him at a costume party eight years earlier. I was Scarlett O'Hara and he was Razzo Rizzo from Midnight Cowboy. I thought he was too short. He thought I was too much of a Jewish princess. And eight years later, the girl who had the party introduced us and we were engaged in two months and we've been married 37 years. And he is my soulmate. And everything I had written on this came true, except I said he's tall, dark, and handsome, and Will is short, dark, and handsome. And I think God said, wear low heels. They're better for your feet. But, but that was a really amazing example of asking. Ask me, my soulmate, effortless, fast, and fun. And it was. Wow, that's a wonderful story. I have a very comparable story about how my, my husband and I got together. Very comparable. Uh, that we, I don't have time to share, but I'll share it at some point. But it's basically the same thing. I wrote a list of everything that I wanted because I had gone through relationship hell after being married quite young. And I found out what I didn't want. And yes. it was very clear what I did not want. And I put all of that and then I put, and this is what I do want. Even to the point of adding one little addendum to it, which is, loves to give massages and does not love to receive massages. Ah, that's so specific. And I was so specific. And there is my husband who is, who turned later into a massage therapist, but 
he can't stand getting massaged, but he he could spend hours massaging me. So oh. you know, it's it's that sort of thing. And when Cupid came and you know shot us both at the same time at the exact same moment, you know, we knew it. We got married three weeks later, and we've been married. Oh my god, that's even faster. <laughs> 37 years also. That's so bizarre. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. So, okay. Um, one more thing, and this might be a little philosophical, but it's something that I, I just toy with all the time in terms of asking, what about the notion that things that are meant to be will manifest, whether we ask for them or not? I mean, do you have anything to say about that, about the the idea that We've chosen everything anyway. It's just a matter of like waking up to it and going, okay, here it is. <laughs> well, that's such an interesting point. You mean we've chosen it like in our past life before we've come in? And yeah, yeah. I still feel though that there's some free will. Like you can say, I'm going to eat dinner, but I feel like you still have choices of what you're going to order. You know, I, I feel like there's still some details like I feel like we choose our purpose and our circle that we reincarnate with but I feel that some things are meant to be but I feel like we have to be ready for them or we have to be open to them and I feel like I feel like we're all you know uh radio waves or sending out messages and there's so many messages we could be sending out but when we ask it helps to focus the message mm -hmm. and and send it out more clearly so maybe things accelerate or happen in an easier way Mm -hmm. Does that make any sense? Yeah, that does make sense. I'm, yeah. wing I'm winging it here, but, you know, I am a dragonfly. So. <laughs> yes. And what about, you know, I find in my own life that when I know something intuitively and I know I'm supposed to do this, and I know I'm supposed to say this, I know I'm supposed to marry this guy or whatever it is, and I don't listen, everything falls apart. Everything. Oh, yeah. 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 That, um... I've learned that lesson, you know, definitely. Um, like I remember taking a job once and I did it because this guy who had been my mentor wanted me to, and it didn't, I wasn't sure something told me no, and I took it anyway. And then I had to get out of it, you know, and I, I learned that lesson with relationships. I, Oh, you know, up here when we moved to Ojai, one of the things I asked for was a house that was um, close to nature and expansive. And um, I wanted it to have certain things. And, you know, I'm shown other houses. There was one we put a bid in, which wasn't exactly the house of my dreams, but thankfully it fell out, you know, so... I feel like the clearer we get on what we want and the more willing we are to, I don't want to say fight, but to not succumb to the fear, like hurry up, hurry up, or, you know, the voices in our head that you're asking too much, you're crazy, da, 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 da. The more that we really listen to that, to the voice and to our heart's desire, I feel the more finely tuned our asking and receiving mechanism becomes if that's even a thing <laughs> yeah and even if the universe keeps saying uh-uh no way <laughs> to just keep focused on what we know what we know to be true right but then also sometimes i go well if this door keeps closing there must be another way to get there and to let go of the way mm -hmm. Bec and to go back to the knowing is I'm drawn to this. I'm meant to create this. I'm meant to whatever, you know, like you meet somebody and you think, oh, that person's supposed to be in my life and it doesn't happen. And then 20 years later, 
you reconnect, you know, so it's, there's so much trust involved. Yeah. yeah. But that's why I love telling these stories to others and to myself to remind myself that our prayers are answered, I believe, just not always in the way we expect them to be. And, and in the timing that timing. we have. <laughs> yes, exactly. Timing and expectations and deserving uh -huh. and all of that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a, it's like planting a garden. You know, there's a lot of rocks and old things you have to get out of the way in order for the roots to take and the flowers to blossom. Yeah. To trust the seeds that you've planted. Yeah. I mean, that's a, a Jesus parable that I, I live my life by, you know, because sometimes I think, oh, there nobody's getting what I'm teaching, uh, you know, and then 10 years later, somebody calls me up and says, you know, that moment that you said that thing that just finally hit me. I finally understand it. <laughs> I know I've had that experience too of feeling invisible or whatever and then somebody says oh my god you're the one that wrote that book or you said blah 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 which blah you know it's it's so remarkable we ha it just i trust i have on this little board in front of me trust and surrender those are so difficult but that is really part i believe of the recipe for asking and manifesting yeah yeah. So tell us how people can get in touch with you and tell us a little bit more about your book and what you're doing and all that. Okay. Kind of Thank promotion. you, Royce. I will be the goddess of shameless self-promotion. Yes. Um, so my book, this is backwards, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. It's called um, From Muck to Magic, An Uplifting Journey. Uh, my book is available on my website and on Amazon, uh, it's my website is wendynox.com and I'll spell it W-E-N-D-I, Knox, K-N-O-X.com. I was named with a Y, but I had to be different, so I changed it. Wendy with an I, Knox.com. So you'll find uh, my book there. You'll find my blog there. I'm also on Instagram at Wendy Knox Uplifter. And um, I'd love you to get on my mailing list. And um, because I'm going to be doing more workshops and more talks and uh, maybe even a TED Talk. I don't know. <laughs> but um, Maybe even Oprah. <laughs> and yeah, yes, I'll see you on Oprah. <laughs> yeah, if anybody out there is friends with Oprah. Um, but see, I'm asking. Uh, but um, yeah, I think the best place to go is my website and it has links to my book. And I also, my publisher made uh, note cards out of the paintings for my book. You know, I, my book came to me after the dragonflies. I asked, I asked, how can I share this magic of the dragonflies with others? And I was guided to write this book, the beginning of which is, have you ever been stuck? So stuck in the muck with the yuck and the guck that you thought, what the muck? <laughs> and um, I wrote the book and then I channeled all the paintings and it's very, uh, I people say, oh, is it a children's book? But it's in the, the shape of a children's book, but it's really a book for our inner child to give us hope and encouragement that when we're crawling in the muck of life, that there's magic growing and we may not be able to see it yet. Well, I so appreciate you being here and sharing your wisdom and your experiences. Aww. And so appreciate all that you're doing. And Remember, it's wendynox.com, Wendy with an I. And I just want to, I want to spend the last one minute here 
practicing asking for what I want because I think that's a really important thing to do. So I'm asking for at least 10 people to sign up for my next Perfect Life Awakening course. I'm doing them remotely and I'm offering various times to accommodate all kinds of time zones. So reach out to me through my website, RoyceMorales.com or PerfectLifeAwakening.com to find out more and to sign up. There we go. And just asking. Yeah. And just to remind everybody that we deserve to ask and to know that when you do, when you do ask, there's energy behind the scenes that's working overtime and saying, yay, they finally asked. So as I tell all my students, the universe is a yes machine. That's what it's designed to do. So what is a universe saying yes to in your life? So there we go. Thank you all so much for being with me. I'll see you all in a couple of weeks. And thanks again, Wendy. You're awesome. Um, thank you. I love you. Thank love you. you. Too. Bye.